We're at my fish camp here in East Point in Uganic Bay on the west side of Kodiak Island. King salmon, red salmon, dog salmon, pink salmon, and silver salmon. So we get all five species here. Um, but in June, we catch red salmon, and red salmon are what we get paid the most for. This year, it's a buck sixty a pound, which is a very good price. We're catching these salmon with a gill net, which is thin strands, sort of like dental floss, but a little bit tougher, but kind of that consistency and that thickness of twine. And the nets are about 14 feet deep, 900 feet long. And we tie one end of that net to the shore, and then we stretch it out, and we hang it on, a, on some lines, which are tethered out in the water with buoys and anchors. And we hang the net on that line so it hangs in the water like a curtain. So what we do is we go along in a skiff every few hours, and we pull the net up from the cork line, and we pull the fish, we un unentangle them from the gill net. That's how you do it here. It's called set netting. When you think of commercial fishing, you think of just grunt labor or catching fish, but really, it's about people, because you're working with people, it's a cooperative activity. I mean, nobody fishes alone. Yeah, I grew up in, in suburban Connecticut, so I grew up in a suburban environment, um, kind of like leave it to beaver. And that's what I grew up in. I didn't know anything about Alaska, but I'd always been intrigued by Alaska since I was a little kid, for whatever reason, I'd always thought of the wilderness as being a cool deal. So I bought a bus ticket to Chicago, I believe, and I hitchhiked from Chicago to Minneapolis, and I met this Chippewa Indian guy who told me that you could ride freight trains. I was like, really? This was the biggest adventure of my life, and I was reading Jack Kerouac's On the Road on this boxcar. I just thought that was the most romantic, adventurous thing, cool thing anybody could do. I remember thinking, this is the life. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. We first came out here in this June, in the summer of 1983. That was the first time we fished here. In 1982, I had had a good crab season and I was looking for something to do with the crab money that would be a way of investing in it. And a friend of mine had told me one time, the best thing you can do if you're fairly independent minded is to buy yourself a job. Why would you not rearrange your life to live out here, you know, if you had the opportunity to do so? I think Alaskans understand this living as part of, you know, the history of the state, what people have been doing, well, for thousands of years, but certainly in the historic period for the past couple hundred years. Coming out, making your way, getting a plot of land, harvesting the resource, and making it work. So we started fishing salmon and we didn't make any money the first year. The price of salmon was really bad that year. We were out here, me and my buddy, and then my younger brother came out. He was 17. We really had a great time. We, we caught a few fish and it, this place was really beautiful. It was really the Alaska that I think all of us had come to find and you never really, I mean, sometimes you find that place that you dream about as an ideal. And this place turned out, at least for me, to be that ideal Alaskan experience. And I've always, I've always thought that. I mean, I come back here every year, and this is, this is our 31st summer on this beach. Yeah, we saw that same fish yesterday. The exact same fish? I'm sure it was. Exactly. <laughs> That's Larry the fish. You know?